thanks for everybody coming out. Really appreciate it. I hope you guys got something out of it. I know you'd like to see more practice, but I hope it was worthwhile. Uh, we had some great energy. Um, I hope everybody's got a chance to see some of the graphics that we got going up on the fence, which, which we're excited about. We think it looks really classy. Um, but, you know, again, thank you so much for coming out. What you got? It sounds like you're losing your voice, James. You've been screaming a lot and yelling a lot in practice. Yeah, but this is typical. I mean, this is typical camp. Um, I feel pretty good. Staff feels pretty good. The weather's been unbelievable. I wish it was a little bit hotter, to be honest with you. Um, but it's been great. I think we've had great energy at practice. Guys are flying around. We've got better. I've, I've dramatically seen us get better, uh, especially on special teams. I think our punters, from the beginning of camp to the end, have improved. Um, um, and that's going to be big for us. So uh, I, I'm, I like where we're at right now. What have you seen from the offensive line, James? They, they, you know, they're working extremely hard. They're working together well. Um, you know, they're a very prideful group. You know, I, I make the argument everywhere I've ever been, the offensive linemen um, are always great guys. I mean, they're the best guys. I mean, they get very little attention unless things go wrong. Um, Herb does a really good job of bonding with those guys, not only with him, but getting the whole group to bond together and to communicate as one and play as one, because that's what it's all about. You, you can be wrong on the old line, but everybody has to be wrong together, if you understand what I'm saying. Everybody's got to be on the same page, and you still got a chance to be successful. So, um, you know, I think they're doing some nice things. You know, we got to stay healthy, and we got to continue to get better and develop some of the young guys. You announced the move of Koa Farmer to linebacker. That's been something that's talked about for a little bit. But why now? Why did you make that move now? It, it, it really, you know, came down to he came to camp. He was 215 pounds. He ran 4'4". Four, four. You know, by the time spring ball comes, he's going to be 225 pounds. His dad was a 235-pound tailback at Hawaii. I just think genetics and training table, he, he's just going to grow into it. And, and as you guys know, we have some depth concerns at the linebacker position. Um, that gives us another guy that's got the size that we're looking for and has the movement. Um, you know, so you know that that's what's so valuable. Right now, in our scheme, we play with three safeties on the field almost all the time. So um, you know, so those guys, those guys are valuable, big, strong, athletic guys um, that can make plays in space. You James. talked a lot about the speed of the freshman class. How has that translated into on-field performance? Because a lot of times, uh, yeah, actually. At this point, I, I think you're right on. You're, you're, you're accurate. I think at this point, you know, the freshmen, for the most part, are still thinking. You see their speed in individual, um, but it doesn't always show up the way you'd like it to show up uh, during the period. And that's why they're thinking so much. They're not only thinking about their assignment on defense or on offense, but they're also thinking about how you know they got to react to whatever the you know the, the team they're going against, the defense or an offense. You know, different coverages, different looks, different formations. So uh, you know that's what we got to do here in the next. What do we got? 16 days or something like that. We got to get those guys playing fast. Well, they're just so much more confident in what we're asking them to do, um, and they're consistent. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing across the board in any position, and especially on special teams, is is being consistent. So, you know. I'd rather you punt it 38 yards every single time than punt it one time 56 yards, another time 26 yards. You understand what I'm saying? It's the consistency, and they've done a much better job with that. Uh, the, the location of the ball is something we talk about with those guys, and I just I see their confidence. Just like Ficken, we saw his confidence grow this spring and all summer. I'm seeing that right now with our punters. James, you've had about a week and a half to watch this team. What's been some of the bigger surprises so far this spring? Um, I, I'm not really sure. Uh, there hasn't there hasn't been anything that's really jumped out to me from a surprise standpoint. Um, you know, I, I think we got some really good football players. I think we do. Um, I think the staff being together now for four years is really valuable, and I see it showing up in a lot of different areas. Um, you know, how we plan, how we prepare, how we come out here and we're effective. I think a lot of times with my personal more, I think, is always better, and that's not necessarily the case. And we're being smart and cutting some things back. Um, you know, Tim Bream, our trainer, has done a great job giving us feedback from that perspective, and then so is, is Dwight Gall as well. So I, I, I don't know if there's been anything that surprised me, but I think overall I'm, I'm pretty pleased um, with what we've been able to do. Have you guys uh, geared toward uh, planning for Central Florida more? And then also, 
with that game being in Ireland, of course, are you going to do anything to like uh, get used to the time change? Obviously, five or six hours different. Yeah, um, we haven't started anything with Central Florida yet. We will here. Um, soon we'll flip the switch, kind of when we go to scout teams and, and those types of things. Um, but, yeah, we have a whole plan. I mean, you guys heard me talk about it, uh, you know, all the caravan stops and everything else about how, you know, we studied, we talked to other coaches, we talked to Navy, we talked to Notre Dame. I think we've talked about all these things in the preparation that's gone into uh, to the trip to Ireland. But yeah, we've done we've done a lot of things, a lot of research. So are you going to, are you going to be like practicing like early in the morning and stuff like that to get used to the time change though? No. James, we saw you guys had a release the other day about Adam Brenneman being out for a while. How do you feel about Mike Jaziki and some of the other tight ends having even come along? Good. You know, um, you know, you you don't want to lose anybody, but that's the position we probably have the most depth. Um, and, and I think Jasicki's done a nice thing. We all know he's really athletic. Uh, part of his issue, though, is he's never put his hand in the ground ever. Um, you know, that's like Chance Sorrell, for example. He's playing offensive tackle, and we, when we recruited him, he was listed as a tight end. He, he played wide out in high school. He was a six foot six, two hundred fifty pound, flexed out tight end. I, I don't know if I would call that a tight end. So we got a lot of guys that come here, and we're asking them to do things that they've never done before. I think running and catching, things that deal with space and athleticism, he's done a great job with. You know, we got to continue getting him more confident when it comes to blocking. As you guys saw, we reported early this summer, he benched 385 pounds for a long, lean kid. So he's got the tools that you're looking for to be an effective blocker. What are some of the characteristics or qualities of coaching a team that's composed pretty much half of a redshirt freshman? You know, I, I, I don't think about that a whole lot. Somebody sent me a stat the other day that we have the second youngest team in America. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't know. I, I, I can't change it, so spending a whole lot of time on it. We just coach the guys that are here, and we coach them hard, and we love them hard, and we fly around and have fun and develop them. And we do the same thing with the seniors. We do the same thing with the freshmen. I probably spend more time with the freshmen. Um, you know, we have brunch on Sundays together. I bring them in at night. Uh, we're finishing up class right now because these guys are dealing with a lot of things. They come in right away. They got to adjust academically. They got to adjust athletically. They got to adjust socially. They got to adjust spiritually. The whole package. Um, you know, so spending a little bit more time with them because one of the things that's important to me is that freshman pitcher you saw that we took the other day. I want to see that same pitcher four to five years from now with those guys walking across the stage and, and playing some good football for us. One of the things that's been great is each night we bring different speakers in. Um, the president, President Barron, came in and spoke the other night, did a great job. We had the Women's Center come in and speak to us as well. We're going to have um, we're going to have campus police. Each night we have a different message come from outside to come and talk to the teams. There's been some really good messages. I think that's really important for our young players, like the freshmen, from a development standpoint so they can get adjusted to Penn State and the community. How are the quarterbacks look? Not only Hackenberg, but O'Connor and the others. Yeah, uh, really good. I, I've been I've been obviously very ple pleased with Hack. I think his improvement from the spring and his confidence and his command at offense, uh, I think across the board is much better. Um, you know, the, the number two battle is interesting. McSorley, uh, all the things that we thought about him when we recruited him, he's a winner, he's smart, um, he's picked it up really well. Um, he doesn't panic. You know, that's what you see a lot of times, these young kids, you put them in there and they just – you don't see that. So, you know, I think I think Mike has had a great – O'Connor's had a great summer. Um, you know, Deej, Dwight Gull, our strength coach, said he's maybe had the best summer of anybody on the team. Uh, but McSorley's right there, and that's what we want. You know, we want to create competition in every position, especially the quarterback position. Yeah, Gattis kind of wrote fun. pretty highly of Hamilton last week. What have you seen out of him? And even though he hasn't played, does he maybe have a leg up since he's been in the program since he's been around? Well, I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, he's got a semester ahead of maybe some of the other young guys, but, but he's got great movement. He's got great body control. He's like a lot of the young players. He's got to be, be more consistent. Um, you know, you know, there's a lot of guys across this country that can make great plays, but can they, can they be consistent? Can they be consistent in how they work and their focus and things like that? You know, and as a redshirt freshman who really didn't play a whole lot, you know, he basically conditioned and lift, lifted because he was limited to the injury. Um, you know, th this is all still brand new for him, to be honest with you. From your perspective, how have you seen Hackenberg develop? Um, you know, in, in my short period you know, of time here, he's been strong the whole time. It's hard for me to say because I wasn't here, obviously, when he first showed up on campus. But I think whenever you see a, a sophomore, a true sophomore, not a redshirt sophomore, be voted by his peers as a captain, and it was a landslide. I mean, you know, I, I think that, that tells you that 
he's earned those guys' respect, uh, not just on the football field, but in the classroom and on campus and in the community, because that's what we talk about. Those guys are captains. They're not just captains on the football field. They're captains 24 hours a day, and we need that leadership, and that's why one of the reasons why I'm in seven I don't think you can ever have enough leadership on your team. How important is that, that uh, your quarterback be one of your captains? Is that, uh, is that important as everyone makes it out to be? I don't think it's the end-all, be-all. Uh, I think in a lot of ways you'd probably like that to be, but I've been on teams where your quarterback wasn't your captain and, you, and you've been successful. Um, you know, I, I think, I think it's, a, it's a nice luxury to have, but I don't think it's something you know, that's imperative. Keeping him fresh is obviously a priority. Is he on a kind of a pitch count of sorts throughout the league? Yes, he is, but I think part of that is we, we handle that through recruiting and development. So my point is the fact that we have five quarterbacks, it kind of takes care of itself, if that makes sense. And it's not just reps and team and Skelly, it's it's individual as well. you know. Um, but yeah, we're definitely aware of that. We keep track of that. But again, having Fessler and, and having Crook and having O'Connor and having McSorley, that really helps with that. We'd always like to have five quarterbacks on the roster. Coach, secondary has... Coach, secondary had some issues last year with communication and things like that. How have they come together with some new guys coming into the fold and with that star position? I, I've been very pleased with our defense as a whole uh, this spring, um, you know, this summer, and 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 really, you know, this camp. I think you look across the board at the guys that we have on on the field. Really, all eleven starters, and really some really good depth as well at other positions. I, I think our defense has a chance to play really well, play fast, and play with confidence. I think. Um, the strength of our D-line, um, I'm, I'm depending on those guys to help the secondary as well because hopefully the, you know, the quarterback's not going to be able to hold on the ball very long and also just the way we call the game, you know, being aggressive. Besides Farmer, have you moved anybody else to another position? Um, I don't think so. Jeff, have we moved anybody else? Besides uh, Farmer? I don't, I don't think so. There, there's guys that you know, we're considering. Probably won't do anything probably until you know, maybe halfway through spring ball or to end of spring ball, but you start kind of thinking about things. Uh, but no, not, not right now, not at this point. Is this team built to win now? I'm worried about Central Florida. Uh, I'm, you know, I'm excited about that game and going there. I think it's a really good team. You know, I think if you look at that roster, they got almost everybody back. Everybody says, well, they lost the tailback. Well, the second team tailback made the second team all conference. So um, I think it's going to be a tremendous challenge. It's a veteran team. It's a veteran coach. Um, you know, plus they're going to show up there. And not only are they going to have their team and their fans, but then George and all of his cousins are going to be at the game as well. So they got that going for them as well.